Right. Now we have derived our efficient point in our whole economy, right? I mean, it's really unthinkable that an economy would actually have one single point where everything just makes sense, where prices in the production sector are equal to prices in the consumption sector, you know, equals to the prices that are used for inputs is a really efficient, that's what we call the uh, uh, fast best markets. Those are best, perfectly competitive markets. And we know that in real life, they do not exist, right? In real life, we don't really have all the information that uh, would make us come to a perfect world like the one that we have uh, described, right? Sometimes we don't know what the inputs cost, all right? And we have to make guesses. But in any case, we also did say that our model was only a two by two by two, and it's a really an abstract uh, kind of model. In real life, we don't have two models. I mean, sorry, we don't have two inputs, we don't have two goods, we don't have two, we've got more, more and more of everything. All right, so the real world is a lot more complicated than our general equilibrium theorem would have us believe. So it is true that often this condition in real life does not hold. But, like a map, maps are useful in taking us from one uh, point to another point. It doesn't mean that the maps are representative of reality. All right, that's one criticism of what we have just done. It really is just too abstract. It only talks about two consumers, etc., etc. Okay, and real world is a lot more complicated. But still, like a map, we can make some use of it. Right? Some maps are better uh, at directing you to where you want to go than other maps. Okay, This is one of the maps. And how good it is really is dependent on how it can guide you in policy formulation. Right? So we said in this model, we do not talk about whether trade is going to result in fair distribution of resources. Right? When we moved from a point like, say, A, to a point like B or C, okay, or from say point H, all right, to a point like F, okay, that was all facilitated by trade, right? Whether we were using a market price that would take us to another point, say E, okay, which is even more efficient, right, or even more fair, but nowhere did we say that the initial um, distribution of resources would be affected after trade has taken place. Trade doesn't do that. We have other means of facilitating fairness. We know that according to philosophers, okay, sociologists, whomever, they're human scientists, that probably a point like, say, G there is a lot less desirable in an economy as opposed to a point like E, where the resources, okay, resources are fairly equally distributed, right? So a point like G or point like F would be seen as unfair or as, un as unjust. Even though you can still reach that point having traded, it's still a Pareto efficient uh, point, okay? It's still acceptable in our model. But uh, uh, lawyers, uh, philosophers might tell us that this is not desirable. And there are various reasons why it's not desirable, and those reasons sometimes are even economic, right? And you will deal with some of those in your other courses, for instance, public economics, all right? An unfair distribution of, result, uh, of resources could result high levels of unemployment, which would result in crime, would, would might have an effect on uh, property prices, Okay, if you have lots of inequalities, you could have diseases which might cost lots of uh, public revenues. You know, rich people do not want to live next to poor people because they might infect them with diseases and the other way around. So there are negative externalities that come uh, as a result of inequalities. And eventually the problems become economic, even though our model doesn't really deal with that. So when we try to explain how a government could intervene in a market, right? A government 
could let the market, could let trade take its course and we move from a point like say A to a point B and then decide once we've reached that point that actually this is not very equitable and force distribution to a point like E. But that movement from a point like B to point E is not Pareto efficiency enhancing. Somebody has to pay for that. And our model also illustrates that to us. Because if you move from point B to point E, obviously James gains, moves to a higher level of utility. But at whose expense? Karen. Karen was somewhere here, and then she had to lose some, and she ended up at a lower level of utility. So an intervention like a government policy to redistribute resources could be explained in our, in, in our model, but it is not Pareto efficiency. It's not a desirable action in this framework. In other frameworks, it is. You should realize that I've always stressed that here we are discussing Pareto efficiency, meaning that there are other types of economic efficiencies that we could talk about. For instance, uh, 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 a social efficiency or welfare efficiency that you will talk about in your other courses, where these issues Issues of social justice, issues of welfare are better discussed than in our very abstract two-by-two two reductionist kind of model.